Okay, good day, uh, preliminary student. Okay, welcome to our discussion on criminal law one. This is uh, CLG three. Okay, uh, your CLG one is the introduction to Philippine criminal justice system, and your CLG two is the human rights education. So we are now dealing with criminal law. Where in this criminal law are divided into two books. Okay, we have book one and book two. Under criminal law book one, the coverage is from Article one to Article one hundred thirteen. And your criminal law book two deals with from Article one hundred fourteen. To Article 366. Okay, so today the coverage of our criminal law book one deals with the general principles of criminal law, deals with the effectivity of criminal law, the definitions of felony, the circumstances affecting criminal liability. Okay. So in chapter one, the the topic that we are going to discuss in, in chapter one is the general principles, the definitions of criminal law, the sources of criminal law, the uh, the different principles or maxims in criminal law, the uh, effectivity of criminal law, and of course the application of provisions of criminal law. Okay, under Article 2. So let us now proceed with the definition of criminal law. Okay, so it is said that criminal law is a branch of public law which defines crimes, treats of their nature, and provides for their punishment. Okay, so criminal law. Uh, define what is crime. Okay, it provides punishment in case of conviction and it treats what kind of crimes that is being committed because under book two it already define it, it already classify what crime or crimes that is being committed. Okay, so the meaning of defined crime, the criminal law, okay, only provided those act or omission, okay, that is against the provisions of criminal law. So in other words, if the act or omission is not punishable by law, not within the definitions of law, so we cannot consider it as a crime. Okay? So, another definition of criminal law is that it is a branch of public substantive law which defines offenses and prescribes their penalties. It is substantive because it defines the state's right to inflict punishment and the liability of the offenders. Okay? Take note class that crime is an offense against the state. Okay? So it is a public law because it deals with the relation of the individual with the state. That's why if you observe that when there is a person was being charged of a crime, the title in the complaint or information is not the name of the victim or complainant, but it is under the name of the people of the Philippines. Okay? Because crime is an is a transgression of the law of the state. So the act of the individual is always against the state. Okay, so next is 
who enacted our criminal law. Okay? So, sino ba yung gumagawa ng ating batas? Including our criminal law. Take note class that the government, okay, are divided into three different branches. We have the executive branch of the government, we have the legislative branch of the government, and we have the, the judiciary. Okay? So, the executive branch is with where the president belongs. Okay? They are responsible in the execution of laws. The le legislative branch belongs to the belongs to the uh, Senate and to the House of Representatives. It is because our legislative bodies consist of two houses. We have the upper house where the 24 senators okay, belong and in the lower house where the house of representative or what we call in simple term as our congressman and they are responsible in the making of laws okay they are responsible in formulating laws and the third branch is our judiciary okay uh, that, that, that is stated under Article 8 of the 1987 Constitution that the legislative power okay, is being is belong to the Supreme Court and to the lower courts. Okay, so their function is to interpret the law. Okay. Now, in making of laws, okay, the Congress has a limitation. Okay. A limitation on enacting criminal laws. It is stated that when Congress will enact laws, it should be of general application. Okay, penal laws must be in general application. So meaning, it should be applied to all, hindi lang sa isang tao. Okay, the penal laws must not partake of the nature of an ex post facto law. In my next slide, we will discuss the characteristics of ex post facto law. Paano ba natin masabi that the law enacted by Congress is within the definition of an ex post facto law? Another limitation on the power on the power of Congress to enact penal laws is that that law must not partake of the nature of a bill of attender. So in my next slide also, we will. We will discuss okay, the concept of bill of attender and must not impose cruel and unusual punishment or excessive fines. So those are the limitations on the power of Congress to enact penal or criminal laws. So let us deal with the basic maxim or principles in criminal law. So there are a lot of maxim or principles. Okay, but in my presentation, I just only look on the uh, common maxim, okay? So, we have the so-called nullium crimen, nullia quena sene legend, okay? So, in English, it means that there is no crime when there is no law punishing the same. So, hindi mo natawag na crimen ang ginawa ng isang tao Kung hindi naman yan punishable ng batas. Okay? So, take note na ang isang act or omission will not be considered as, as, as crime if that is not punishable by a penal loss. Okay? Another maxim is actus non facit reum, nesimens set regum. The act cannot be criminal where the mind is criminal. Ah, sorry. The act cannot be criminal where the mind is not criminal. So, pasok ito doon sa exempting circumstances. Okay? So, you cannot consider criminal if that person, if the mind of that person is not criminal. So, mamaya, or, or in the later part of our discussion, titignan natin kung saan ito applicable. Okay? 
actus me in vitro factus non is meus actus an act done by me against my will is not my act so that is another provision in the revised penal code that give uh, exempting circumstances except the uh, exemption from criminal liability okay and lk es causa de la causa es causa del mal causado he who is the cause of the cause is the cause of the evil cause okay so we will discuss this later okay all right so let us proceed with the sources of criminal law sources of philippine criminal law so we have the revised penal code okay ito yung pinag-aaralan natin ngayon the revised penal code or known as act 3815 Okay, so yung, yung revised penal code na pinag-uusapan natin ay isa lamang ito sa sources ng Philippine criminal law. Okay, other than that, we have a special penal laws, presidential decrees, executive order. Okay. Now, when was the revised penal code okay, enacted? It is said that the revised penal code was enacted okay, by the Philippine legislature on December 8, 1930. Okay, and it took effect on January 1, 1932. Okay, let us proceed with the significant terms or terminology in our subject. When we talk about penal laws, it relates to penalties, law which relate to penalties. Criminal law, laws which relate to crime, felony, okay, the term felony is a crime under the revised penal code, it is referred as felony. Under article 3 ng revised penal code natin, na-define niya yung felony, okay. Felony is an act or omission punishable by the revised penal code. So, ang term na gagamitin natin is felony. If we are referring to violations of the provisions of the revised penal code, misdemeanor, it is a minor infraction of the law, such as a violation of an ordinance, either a municipal ordinance or a city ordinance. Crime, it is a generic term. Okay, a generic term where the wrongdoing is punished under the revised penal code or under special laws. Okay. So, if that is punishable by special law, we are talking about offense. Okay? Yung specialist natin, yung mga public acts, those are considered an under terminology of offense. Now, let us discuss the two existing theories under the revised penal code or under the, under the criminal law. All right. So, we have number one theory, is classical theory. So, it's very common to us, okay, the term classical theory, which is being formulated by Dr. Cesar Micaria, okay, classical theory. So, classical theory, the basis of criminal liability is human free will, and the purpose of penalty is retribution. So, yun, 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 Ganyan kahigpit yung treatment ng classical theory sa mga offender. Okay? Sabi nila that the human being possess free will. Okay? So, man is a moral creature with absolute free will to choose between good and evil, thereby placing more stress upon the effect or result of felonious act than upon the man. Okay, so, ito bagay yung sinasabi ni Vicaria na ang tao ay mayroong free will. Yung free will na yun, yun ang nagdidikta sa kanya kung ano yung kanyang dapat gawin. Kasi alam niya kung alin yung mali and alin yung tama. Okay? So, ang pinitinan dito sa classical theory, yung result. Okay, yung result na ginawa ng tao. Kaya, kung ginawa niya yung tama, he will be rewarded. Okay? Kung ginawa niya yung mali, he will be punished. So, regardless of the conditions, 
of the mind or who committed the act. Okay, so yun ang classical theory. So yung punishment naman sa kanila, yung purpose doon is for retribution. Okay, para naman mag-feel ng taong gumawa ng krimen. Okay, mag-feel niya kung gaano kahirap. Okay, so retribution. So you need to suffer the consequences of your act. Okay, so that is classical theory. Under the under the positivist theory, okay, this is formulated by by Cesar Lombroso. Sabi naman ni Lombroso, man is occasionally subdued by strange and morbid phenomena, which pushes him to do wrong in spite or contrary to his volition. Okay, ang tao kahit ayaw yung gumawa na ikasasama o sa tingin niya ay mali okay dahil okay dahil nga yung tao ay ay tawag doon ay subject for any factors that will lead him or her to commit a particular act okay na kung saan sabi ni Lombroso ang krimen Okay, ang krimen is isang social and natural phenomenon. It can be created in check by applications of abstract principle of law and jurisprudence, nor by imposition of penalties fixed and determined a priori. Okay, so yung yung Probation penal code naman natin kung titingnan nyo. Okay? May mga provision doon na kung saan kinoconsider din yung condition ng offender. Siya ba ay bata? Siya ba ay mayroong diferensya? Okay? Kaya doon natin titingnan kung paano siya titreat ng ating probation penal code. Okay? So, nandiyan yung positivist theory. So, yung purpose naman ng punishment or penalty is rehabilitation okay rehabilitation by means of individual measure on case to case basis okay so kaya nga yung paniniwala ba ni Lombroso that the criminal is a sick person okay that they need they, they needed to be treated okay in a particular aspect okay so Bigyan siya ng karampatang atensyon para ma-address yung kanyang problema. Alright, let us distinguish the term mala in si and mala prohibita. Pag sanabi natin malong in si or mala in si, literally means that the act is inherently evil or bad or perceived wrongful from their nature like the crime of murder, theft, or rape. In other words, mala and si is a violation of the revised penal code. Okay? It is a violation of the revised penal code. While you malang prohibitum are wrong, are wrong merely because they are prohibited by statute. Like illegal possessions of firearm or violations of the omnibus election code. So these are a violation of special laws. Okay, so please take note of the two different terms. Mala in si and mala prohibito. Okay. So we have the so-called common law crimes. Okay. So ano ba yung ibig sabihin ng common law crimes? It is the body principles, usage, and rules of action which do not rest upon or their authority in express or positive declarations of the will of the legislature. Okay. Common law crimes are not recognized in the Philippines. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, class, hindi ka parurusahan, okay? hindi ka magsasuffer ng punishment kung hindi naman violation ng ating criminal law yung ginagawa mo. Okay? Kasi nga, wala tayong tinatawag na common law provisions, common law crimes dito sa Pilipinas. Kaya, Kahit gaano man ka, kapangit tingnan yung ginawa mo, kung yun ay hindi naman punishable ng aking batas, okay? so hindi ka pa rin mapaparusahan. 
So common law crimes are not recognized in the Philippines because we are relying on law. Okay, we are relying on law, on the existing of the of the particular law. Now, let us proceed with the characteristics of criminal law. Okay, so we have three characteristics of criminal law. We have the generality, territoriality, and prospectivity. Okay, so is is ay natin to. Ano yung pagkakaiba ng tatlong to? So take note that these three characteristics has a general provisions and provided also an exception. Okay? So ano ba yung ibig sabihin ng general provision or generality? Okay? Characteristics of criminal law. It said that the criminal law of the country govern all persons within the country regardless of their race, belief, sex, or breed. Okay? So, we are talking about people. We are talking about individual. Okay? Wherein, kung ang taong yun, yung individual na yun, ay nandito sa atin, okay? He is bounded by our criminal law. Okay? All persons within the country, regardless of their race, belief, sex, or creed, if they committed violations of our criminal law, they need to suffer the consequence. Okay? They will be charged. Okay? Uh, one, one very very example is the case of Pimperton. Diba? Pimperton is a U.S. Uh, soldiers was being charged and convicted of rape with homicide, diba? So, regardless of his race and nationality, but since he committed the crime within the Philippine territory, okay, he is being subjected to our law. Okay. So, meron bang exception? Meron bang mga tao na hindi siya cover ng ating criminal law? Okay? Sino sino ba yung mga tao na hindi cover ng ating criminal law? Okay? So, there are provisions of law that provides exception for the coverage of our criminal law. Okay, number one is that is under the principles of public international law. Okay? Under the provisions of public international law. The following are not subject to our penal laws, even if residing or sojourning in the Philippines and committing crimes. Okay? Sino sino sila? Number one, the ambassadors the sovereigns and other chief of the state, the ministers, residents, and chairs of the affairs. Okay? So, sila yung mga individual na kung sakaling nakagawa ng krimen sa Pilipinas, ay hindi sila cover ng ating criminal law. Okay? They, because of the principles of public international law. Another one is under the treaties or treaty stipulation. And under this, the persons who are exempted from the operations of applications of our criminal law under the provisions of the treaties entered into by the Philippines with other countries. Kung sa treaties or ano man na agreement na pinasukan ng Pilipinas okay, sa ibang bansa at mayroong provision doon that anyone okay, who committed crimes in the Philippine territory will be exempted from the applications of our laws, it will be respected. Okay? Another one is under the law of preferential application. So, mayroon may tayong tatawin na preferential application. Ano yung example niya? Under section 11 of the Constitution, which provides that no member of the Congress shall be questioned nor be held liable in any other place for any speech or debate in Congress or in any committee thereof. Okay? So, because there's nang tinatawag na privilege of speech. Okay? So, hindi mo sila pwedeng malihin. Kung ang speech nila, okay, kahit pangit yung speech nila, kahit offensive yung speech nila, if that's delivered during the session of Congress, okay, they will be held liable. Okay. Another 
Another one is, di ba, if you remember, the supervision na yun, na, 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 during the, or during the, uh, the uh, session of Congress, hindi ko pwede artist to win. Yung member ng Congress, okay, for a crime punishable by less than prison mayor. Okay? But if the crime committed is punishable by more than prison mayor, you can arrest even there is, there is a session in Congress. Okay, so, yun ang sasabating law and preferential application. Now, second characteristics of criminal law is territoriality. That penal laws of the country have force and effect only within its territory. It cannot penalize crimes committed outside the Philippine territory. Okay? So, now, ang pinag-usapan natin dito, saan ginawa? Okay? Doon sa generality, sino ang gumawa? Okay? Dito sa territoriality, saan niya ginawa? Okay? O kaya, sabi niya class, under the territoriality principle, penal laws of the Philippines have force and effect only within its territory. Okay? Yung application lang ng ating criminal law ay dito lang sa Pilipinas. Sa teritoryo lang ng Pilipinas. So, kung kaya, kailangan natin tingnan. Okay? Saan ba yung teritoryo ng Pilipinas? Hanggang saan ba yung jurisdiction ng Pilipinas? Okay? So, yung national territory is being defined under Article 1 of the 1987 Constitution. And yun ang general rule. Okay? Under the territoriality principles. Meron ba exception? Na kahit wala ka sa Pilipinas, pag nakagawa ka ng, pag, ng, pag nakagawa ka ng krimen, ay pwede ka pa rin parusahan ng ating batas. Okay? Dito sa Pilipinas. Mayroon. Okay? Mayroon tayong exception. Yung exception niyan ay nasusulat sa Article 2 ng ating Revised Penal Code. Okay? So, ang tawag doon is Extraterritoriality Application of the Revised Penal Code. Okay? Extraterritorial Principles. So, ito yung mga instances na kahit na doon, nandun ka, kahit doon mo ginawa yung krimen sa labas ng ating teritoryo, ay pwede ka pa rin parusahan. Okay? Number one, should commit an offense while on a Philippine ship or airship. Should commit an offense while on a Philippine ship or airship. Kung nakagawa ka ng krimen, Okay? For example, so magkaya ka sa Philippine Airlines papuntang Canada. Okay? While you are boarding on the Philippine airship, may nabubug ka o mayroong kang nasaktan o mayroong kang ginawang hindi maganda sa loob ng aeroplanong yun. Kahit yung aeroplanong yun ay lampas na sa teritoryo ng Pilipinas. Okay? Pili ka pa rin parusa. Pili ka pa rin uh, i-charge under the Philippine territory, under the Philippine laws. Okay? So, take the class of this particular situation. Philippine ship or airship. Okay? So, we're talking about the, the nationality not of the owner but the nationality or the registration of that ship or airship. Okay? So, let on the next slide go, we will distinguish yung B-cell. Okay? Okay, dito mo tayo sa pangalawang exception. Should forge or counterfeit any coin or currency note of the Philippines or obligations and securities issued by the government of the Philippines. Okay? So, kung ikaw ay pumunta sa ibang bansa, okay, kahit ikaw ay hindi Pilipino, ba? Kaya lang you are forging or counterfeiting the coins or currency known of the Philippines, you will also be held liable. Okay? And third, should be liable for acts connected with introduction into the Philippines of the obligation and securities mentioned in the preceding numbers. Yung lahat ng mga counterfeited coins, yung lahat ng mga forged currency or notes, ay binigbit mo papunta sa Pilipinas. Tinala mo papunta sa Pilipinas. Okay? Or you transacted with that forged or counterfeited currency notes or coins. You are still liable. Okay? 
Number four is while being a public officer or employee, should commit an offense in the exercise of their functions. Okay, for example, you are a public officer. Okay, lumabas ka ng Pilipinas. And then, you do something illegal which is in connection with the exercise of your function. Kasi hindi ka naman, ma, hindi ka naman magiging liable if you act, okay, if your act is not in relation to your function. Diba? Alright. Fifth, should commit any of the crimes against national security in the law of nations defined in Title 1 of Book 2 of the Revised Penal Code. So, gumawa ka ng krimen which is defined under Book 2 of the Revised Penal Code. Title 1, Book 2. Ano ba yung Title 1 of Book 2? Okay, crimes against national security in the law of nations. From Article 114 to Article 126 of the Revised Penal Code. For example, under Article 114, okay, you committed treason. Uh, treason. Treason is committed only during war times. Okay? Even if you are a foreigner, but you are engaged in treasonous activities, you will be held liable. If you are a Filipino citizen, you go to other states okay, during war, and you are committing, you are engaged in treasonous activities, you will be held liable under our criminal law. Okay? So, ito yung exception, wherein an individual, okay, regardless na Regardless of their place for the commission of a crime of the crime enumerated under Article 2, you will be held liable. Okay, so don't forget, itong limang ito, kung ito yung nagawa mo, okay, outside the Philippine territory, you will also be held liable. Okay? We have also special laws, okay, like the uh, Trafficking in person, okay, like illegal drug trading. Uh, right now we have the the anti-terror law. Its application is also okay impossible. Even you are outside the Philippine territory, you will be held liable if that particular laws are being violated. Okay, so those are still not then young sheep. Okay, and there are two classification yon. We have the foreign public business and we have the foreign merchant business. Pag sinabi natin foreign public business, war business, okay, are considered to be an extension of the nationality of the owner of said vessel and cannot be subjected to the law of a state. Okay, ito yung mga warship. Okay, yung mga warship is considered as the extension of the of the territory of the flag state. Okay? So, hindi sila, hindi sila, hindi sila covered ng ating batas. Okay? So, napares din yan ng mga embassy. Okay? Yung mga embassies, okay, kung mayroong embassies yung China dito sa Pilipinas, yung embassies nila yun, yun ay also known as extension of their territory. Kung ang Pilipinas ay mayroong embassy sa China, yung embassy natin doon, this is, that is also our extensions of our territory. Okay. Ano naman yung foreign merchant visa? Okay? So, they are subjected to the territorial laws of a particular state. So, bakit kailangan natin distinguish? Kasi nga, pag public visa yung involved, hindi covered yan ng territorial laws of a particular state. Ang mayroong, mayroong governing rules kanila ay yung kanilang own territory or states. Well, yung mga merchant vessel, they are, they are subjected to the territorial laws. Alright. So, meron tayong dalawang rule, okay, na ino-observe, okay, as to jurisdiction over crimes committed aboard foreign merchant vessel while in the territorial waters of another country. So, itong rule na to, 
Ito yung kino-observe if a particular act is committed in a foreign merchant vessel. At yung foreign merchant vessel na yun ay nandudoon sa foreign country. Okay. Now, meron dalawang rule. Ang first rule is French and the second rule is English rule. Pag sinabing French rule, it is the flag or nationality of the vessel which determines jurisdiction unless the crime violates the peace and order of the host country. Ito pa sa French rule. Ang mayroong governing authorities dito, kung mayroong nangyayaring hindi kagandahan or or mayroong masamang nangyayari, mayroong kang nag nagawang masama. Okay? Sabihin natin, nagagawa ka ng violation. Okay? Doon sa loob ng ng merchant vessel na yon. Pag in natin yung French rule, hindi ka pakikialaman ng country or state kung saan nakadaon yung vessel nyo. Okay? For example, yung yung merchant vessel ng Taiwan, okay, mga Taiwanese, yung mga Taiwanese, yung vessel na yun ay papuntang Pilipinas. Okay? Sabi natin, example lang, papuntang Pilipinas. At doon sa loob ng Taiwan, Taiwanese vessel, merchant vessel, ay nagbubugal yung mga Taiwanese yung may nasaktan. Okay? Ngayon, kung i-apply natin yung French rule, hindi pakikialaman ng ating gobyerno, ng ating batas, yun ang iyaring bubugan sa loob ng Taiwanese vessel. Okay? Walang pakialam yung Philippine government or Philippine laws doon sa nangyayaring bubugan sa loob ng Taiwanese vessel if we are going to apply French rule. Kasi sa French rule, ang mayroong ang mayroong jurisdiction sa kanila ay yung kanila state. Okay? Pero naman, kung dito sa English rule, sabi ito sa English rule, the location or situs of the crime determines jurisdiction unless the crime merely relates to the internal management of the vessel. So, ito plus na English rule, it's the opposite of French rule. Ibig sabihin, sa, kung ang Taiwanese vessel na yun ay nandito sa Pilipinas at mayroon nangyaring ganyan sa loob ng kanilang vessel, okay, the Philippine authorities, the Philippine government has jurisdiction. Okay, except na lang daw, if it is merely relates to internal management of the vessel. Okay, limbawa, hindi nagkasundo nag nag yung mga crew or officers ng ship na yun, well, hindi, hindi makikalam yung ating bansa. But in in short class, alam dito sa dalawang ito ang sinusunod ng ating, ng ating state. Okay? We are following or observing the English rule. Okay? Kaya kung mayroong mga foreign merchant visa na nandito, kaya mayroong silang nagawang krimen sa loob ng kanilang barko, okay? the Philippine authorities will investigate and will file charges against the offender. Okay? Because we are following the English rule. Alright, the third the characteristics of criminal law is prospectivity. Okay? An act or remission will only be subjected to a penal law if they are committed after the penal law has taken effect. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, class, yung ating criminal law, yung application niya, Okay, may i-apply lang yung criminal law, yung provisions ng criminal law na yun after it took effect. Okay? At after it took effect. Prospective, ibig sabihin ng prospective, hindi paabante. Okay? So, conversely, acts or omissions which have been committed before the effectivity of a penal law could not be penalized by such penal laws. Okay? So, ano yung exception niya na kailan pwedeng ma-apply yung bagong batas doon sa mga okay, doon sa mga nakakomit na, commit, na, na. kailan pwedeng i-apply retroactively pabalik okay ito na yun when the penal law is favorable to the offender in which case it would have retroactive application provided that the offender is not a habitual dealing with and there is no provision in the law against its retroactive application. Okay? So, ito yung instances na yung penal laws, pwedeng may apply pabalik. 
e kahit ngayon yung ginawa halimbawa mm, ngayon ngayong taon na aprobahan yung batas na to okay? at itong batas na to ay nagbibigay ng ng magandang favor sa mga convicted na okay? sa lumang batas so it will also it will give a retroactive application so kung natatandaan yung class yung naging controversy doon sa good conduct time allowance okay so yung batas na yun which is favorable to the offender ay nabigyan ng retroactive application or yung iba nagkaroon ng beneficyo doon okay kaya lang mayroong nag mayroong controversy so kaya chinek ulit kung sino-sino lang yung pwede maka-avail ng ng favorable provisions ng batas na yun Okay? So, pero kung may bagong batas naman, yung bagong batas naman na yun is not favorable to the offender, hindi siya i-apply pabalik. Okay? Para lagi siyang pabante. Okay? Right after its effectivity. Yun ang ibig sabihin ng prospectivity. Okay? So, what are the effects of repeal of penal laws? If the repeal makes the penalty lighter in the new law, the new law shall be applied. Okay? Pag sabing lighter, magaan. Okay? Pag magaan yung yung penalty sa bagong batas, okay, ini-apply yan. Okay, pwede i-apply sa mga offender na nahatulan in the under the old law. Ito yung exception. When the offender is a habitual dealing friend, or when the new law is made not applicable to pending action or existing causes of action. Okay? So, on the later part of our discussion, ma-encounter natin yung word, the word na habitual dealing with. Okay? Another one is, if the new law imposes a heavier penalty, law enforced at the time of the commission of the offense shall be applied. So, hindi nga pwedeng hindi nga pwedeng i-apply yung bagong matas na yun, lalo na kung hindi yan favorable sa open there. Okay? Magiging ito sa ex post facto law. Okay, di ba? So, if the new law totally repeals the existing law so that the act which was penalized under the old law is no longer punishable, the crime is obliterated, pending cases are dismissed, and certain penalties imposed are remitted. Okay, so the rule of prospectivity also applies to judicial decision, okay, administrative rulings, and circulars. Okay, so let us discuss about the ex post facto law. Okay, so paano natin masabi na yung batas is considered as an ex post facto? Okay. So, an ex, an ex post facto law is one which makes criminal in an act done before the passage of the law in which was innocent been done in punishes such an act. Okay? So, hindi pa nga krimen, wala pang batas doon sa ginawa mo noon. Kaya lang, nung meron na nangyayaring batas, covered pa rin yung ginawa mo noon. Okay, that is an example of ex post facto law. Another one is aggravate the crime or makes it greater than it was been committed. Okay? So, third is change the punishment and inflict a greater punishment than the law at annex to the crime when committed. That, ito lang yung punishment niya nung ginawa mo ito. Ngayon may bagong matas. Ito lang yung punishment. Okay? So, hindi pwede i-apply sa'yo. Kasi kung i-apply niya sa'yo, it is considered ex post facto law. It, that is illegal. That is unconstitutional. Okay. Assuming to regulate civil rights and remedies only, in effect, imposes penalty or deprivations of a right for something which when done was lawful. Okay? Deprive a person accused of a crime of some lawful protection to which he has become entitled such as the protections of a former conviction of acquittal or a proclamation of amnesty. All right. Next is, let us dis distinguish, okay, 
crimes punished under the revised penal code and crimes punished under special laws. Ito yung term na ginamit natin kanina, mala in C and mala prohibita. Mala, malum in C or malum prohibito. Okay? Let us distinguish. Number one, that's the moral trait of the offender. Okay, that is the first distinction as the moral trait of the offender. Under the revised penal code, the moral trait of the offender is considered. Okay? That is why liability would only arise when there is dolo or culpa in the commission of the punishable act. While in crimes punished under special laws, the moral trait of the offender is not considered. It is enough that the prohibited act was voluntarily done. Okay? So, so may rin sabi, sa revised penal code, if you violated the revised penal code, it can you consider yung moral trait mo. Okay? Moral trait. Ibig sabihin, ano yung yung intention mo? Okay? While doon sa violations of special laws, hindi tinagalan dito yung moral trait mo. Okay? Kahit sabihin mo wala kang intensyon na gawin yung violation na yun, okay? it's enough that you violated that special laws. Okay. Pagdating na mag-class a good faith as a defense, in crimes under the revised penal code, Good faith or lack of criminal intent is a valid defense. Okay, unless the crime is the result of culpa. In crimes punished under special laws, good faith is not a defense. Okay, good faith is not a defense. Eh, hindi ko sinasayt siya. Okay, wala akong ganyan kaintensyon na gawin yun. Uh, pwede yan na magamit na depensa mo in, if in case yung violation na nagawa mo is under the revised penal code. Pero kung ang nagawa mong violations is punishable by special laws, hindi mo pwedeng gawin na dipinsa yung, yung good faith mo yun. Okay. As to the degree of accomplishment of a crime in crimes punished under the revised penal code, the degree of accomplishment of a crime is taken into account in punishing the offender. Thus, there are attempted, frustrated, and consummated stages in the commissions of the crime. Okay, so that is provided class under Article 6. The stages in the execution of crimes. Okay? In crimes punished under the special law, the act give rise to a crime only when it is consummated. There are no attempted or frustrated stage unless the special law expressly penalizes the murder attempt or frustration of the crime. Okay, but what in the mitigating and aggravating circumstances? In crimes punished under the revised penal code, mitigating and aggravating circumstances are taken into account in imposing the penalty since the moral trait of the offender is considered. Okay? So, pag-usap natin yan under Article 12 okay, and 13. Okay? While in the special laws, mitigating and aggravating circumstances are not taken into account in imposing Penalty, okay? Pagdating naman pala sa degree of participation, if there are two or more than one offenders involved in the commissions of an offense, in crimes under the provised penal code, when there is more than one offender, the degree of participation of each in the commissions of the crime is taken into account in imposing the penalty. So, makiklasify ba doon? Sino ba yung principal? accomplices and accessories okay? if that is under the revised penal code. Pero pagdating sa special laws, okay, wala yun. Walang degree participation. Okay? Because all who per perpetrated the prohibited act are penalized to the same extent. There is no principal or accomplice or accessory to be considered. Alright. So, Yung scope of the applications of the provisions of the revised penal code, mayroon tayo tinatawag na intra-territorial, which refers to the applications of the revised penal code within the Philippine territory. And we have the extra-territorial, refers to the application of the revised penal code outside 
the Philippine territory. Okay, so you know the Cayman Islands. Yeah. All right. So let us now proceed. And all right. So that that's the end of chapter one. Okay. So thank you, and be ready in your evaluation for our schedule. And if you want to read some uh, provisions or some reading articles to supplement my discussion, you can do that by reading the revised penal code if you have the revised penal code. Okay, so thank you so much and good day, everyone.